Welcome to A Shot of Rock. I'm your host, Alex, and I'm here today with Soil. Do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Hey, I'm Tim. I play bass. I'm Mitch. I play drums. Okay. So how's the tour been so far? It's been good. This is, uh, we're just kind of doing a little weekend warrior thing, so it's just four dates in a row. But uh, it's actually the first time we've ever done anything with Psycho Stick before. Oh, how's that going? They're cool. They're fun. They're fun guys. They're a good band. I mean, we've known them for a long time, but uh, it's the first time we've ever done anything <laughs> with them before. And does it bring a different crowd to shows? Or uh, a different this atmosphere? is only the second night, but uh, so far, it, it you know, it just seems like a normal crowd. You know, it's just two types of different bands. They kind of have a comic thing going on and a little more dismal rock thing going on. I guess. <laughs> it's a great live show. Yeah. Great live show. Um, how many times have you seen them? <laughs> ah. <laughs> there are things happening. Yes, the there camera. are. Uh, the, other, <laughs> the other booths from the band are doing something. Why don't you swing over and get a get a little thing on that? There's nothing going on. Oh, <laughs> no, there's not. You're too fast. Yeah, that's what Jake's wife says. <laughs> oh. <laughs> a tour manager, by the way. Okay, so what are you doing after this tour? Uh, we're going to Europe, and uh, we're. It's going to be Cold Chamber, Us, a band called The Defiled, and a band called Dope. And uh, we're all going to the UK, and then we're going to go do a few dates in Europe with just Cold Chamber and Us. And okay. then after that, we're going to do a US run with Power Man 5000. Oh, sweet. So yeah, we have a busy summer coming up. <laughs> um, what are the crowds like in Europe? We've always done really well in the UK. And uh, that, that, that scene has just kind of always just grabbed us. So, you know, it's been, it's been awesome. live show and everything too it's it's a good feel all the time i've heard they're a lot wilder than the crowds are here uh, you say it, you know kind of depends on where you're at you know it's every like every country there is like every state here different countries different states different reactions kind of thing yeah, yeah. okay so um da, 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 da. okay for your newest album whole correct mm -hmm. you um did pledge music for it yeah we just did uh a, it was a kickstarter just to yeah. fund the actual recording of the record yeah because we wanted to make the record that we wanted to make we didn't want anybody breathing over our uh shoulders and telling us do this or we need that so we took our utter at utmost time doing it the way we wanted to do it so it's just uh we called all the shots on the recording of the record and stuff and then we teamed up with uh two other record labels and to release it and market it and put it out and yeah. stuff like that. And you work for Pavement Records, correct? Yes, I do. What do you do for it exactly? I do all the A and R, so I sign all the bands. So do you have to so when you're out and you do you watch the local bands? I ch I try to get a sneak peek of everybody that's playing. Sometimes it's a little hard when you you know, you're up half the night and trying to sleep and get ready for a show and stuff, but yeah. uh, I've actually found a couple of bands from just being out on the road here and stuff, so. Yeah. Fun. I'm only allowed to say certain things. You're only allowed to say certain <laughs> things? What are, what are you allowed to say? <clears throat> well, not much. Not much? No. Like, you can say who you are, what you do, and... That's about it, yeah. And then crowds are fun? Yeah, that's Adam's orders, the guitarist. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's a real stickler on that. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just here for looks? That's, yeah. You got I, it. I just do things with sticks. It's fine. Okay. Exactly. Um, were you a part of the recording process? Uh, part of it, yeah. Actually, yeah. Will Hunt, uh, one of Tim's really good friends, uh, was on the record as well. So mm -hmm. he did most of the work. He did all the heavy lifting. It, did you help write with him? Uh, a little bit here. There, I was on my time on the on the album, and it was a good time. It was actually right when I came in, um, mm -hmm. and so and they already had uh, Will locked up because that guy's awesome. So, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, Mitch has been with us for over two years. It's almost three now. It's almost four, so, but yeah, who's oh, counting? <laughs> 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 Fantastic. Um, apparently, you're counting though. Um, yeah. Uh, what was it like working with Will Hunt? I mean, like I said, we we've been friends with him for forever, and when me, Adam, and Ryan got back together, we really didn't have a permanent drummer at that time. Mm -hmm. So we had uh, Will had said he'd love to play on the record, and naturally he couldn't tour or do anything with us, so we just you know had him play on the record and stuff, and uh, pretty much Mitch has been with us ever since then. So. You know, it was fun to work with Will, but now we've got Mitch in the band and have the solid lineup 
once again. So. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, what is your writing process, or what do you do when you go to write the song? It all starts with a riff, like. Uh, Adam will come up with a riff, or I'll come up with a riff, and Adam's really good about coming up with, you know, almost fully complete songs and stuff. Mm -hmm. So then we'll demo it at his house or my house and send it over to Ryan, and Ryan will put the, the vocals and lyrics to it, and then we'll change it accordingly, and and then uh, and pretty much go record it and or shelve it or do whatever we do with it, you know. But it all it pretty much just all starts with a, some sort of a, a guitar riff and then builds from there. All right. Um, you guys have been through quite a few record labels. Why did... Can you say why those fell out, or...? Well, the first label we were ever on went out of business. Yeah. And then we were on, uh, J Records for <laughs> two. And, uh, they, they merged with, they merged with Sony, and the label got absorbed by RCA and, and stuff like that, so that, that ended. And then we were on this label called DRT, and they went out of business. <laughs> and then we were with the Beeler Brothers, uh, for two records. And with this new one, we kind of wanted to do more of an independent thing. Mm -hmm. And it just, it worked out great because we were able to do the Kickstarter to fund the record. And I work for the record label, so it was a, a natural mm -hmm. process to go to pavement. And then we have overseas counterparts that we do stuff with, so that's kind of how all that went out about. I mean, if we could have stayed on the same label throughout all these years, we definitely would have. But situations and circumstances, yeah. mainly most of them went out of business in some <laughs> way. It's changed big time. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so then we got some lightning round questions for you that could be stupid, who knows. Okay, um, what is your pre-show ritual? Uh, I like to take a nap, <laughs> then stretch, and then take down a few beers and a couple of shots and get ready for the show. <laughs> I like to drink heavily. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah, well. Does it make your drumming better? Oh yeah, absolutely to me. <laughs> it's not good like at the beginning anyway, so I'm, I'm good to go after that. I won't know the difference. <laughs> okay. It's your alcohol choice. Uh, we like we like Jaeger naturally. Yeah, Jaeger for shots, sure. but then some beers and stuff. Coors Light, Silver Bullet. Absolutely. All right. What is the first album you ever purchased? A Motley Crue shot the devil. Yes. Ooh, Metallica Black Album. I'm young. <laughs> 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 okay, what's one song that you wish you wrote? Are we on that metal show? Yeah, I took these for that. <laughs> uh, I don't know, any Motley Crue song, I guess. I don't really have a comment. I'm not that good, so. <laughs> Alright, first song you learned to play or sing? Uh, Black Sabbath Paranoid on bass. Inner Sandman. Gotta be. Alright, what is your number one vice? Booze. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. And booze. All right. And it makes you a better drummer because you learn drunk, right? Absolutely. All right. <laughs> All right. Weirdest rumor you've ever heard about yourself? Oh, uh, man. I don't remember if it, I'm trying to think of a good one. You answer when I'm trying. I, to apparently, I've gotten half of America pregnant. So. <laughs> oh really? Other than that. <laughs> that takes some talent. <laughs> 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 Still can't think of one? Uh, you know what? My mind is completely blank. blank. Okay. What is the best concert you've ever been to? Hmm. Uh, probably, honestly, for like, like a performance aspect, uh, Fleetwood Mac was really awesome. Really? Yeah, I saw them. They were great. But again, I'll probably have to go with the Motley Crue thing, considering they're my favorite band. The Dr. Feelgood tour of 1989 was great. That was a good one. I'd say Degrade the Signal. A good band. All right. What was uh, so good about their show? Uh, you know what? I, uh, they got this weird guy. He's on bass. <laughs> yeah. And he, I don't know, he's just so, he's got a funny stage presence. It's almost more goofy than it is good, but yeah, yeah they're good live. All right. Um, weirdest thing you've ever been asked to sign? Uh, the grossest thing that I've ever signed was there was this one girl that had, that she pulled down her pants and she was about a 300 pound person and she had like this stain going up these granny panties and asked us all to sign her ass. So I just kind of took the sharpie and just went like that and then proceeded to throw the sharpie out. <laughs> that was pretty bad. <laughs> That's disgusting. Uh, I, I mean, sometime, one time we rolled in this one town and there must have, there was like a sawmill 
and there are all these people that like had like limbs cut off and like little arms like sewn back up in here and like people were asking us to sign their prosthetic legs and arms and stuff it was really messed up <laughs> oh, man. can you top that tampon that's the best that i've ever done not used i, I would hope Go, not no I'd... absolutely not why are you people so weird um <laughs> All right, biggest pet peeve of the rock genre. Biggest pet peeve. Yeah, oh, something that so bothers many. you. There's so many. <laughs> you can say them. We got time. I uh, the main thing that bothers me is sometimes like when uh, local bands. We we came up with the top five local band quotes, which is uh, number one, we usually pack this place by ourselves. Uh, number two, can you strike your drums for us tonight? Number three, can we use your cabinets? Uh, we're going to be signed any day now, and uh, back in the day it was what we'll see on Ozfest. And then the fifth question is, oh, can you give this to your record label? In which we respond, well, I think you're going to get signed every day now, any day now. And it's just like, well, we'd like to be on your label. So yeah, those are the <laughs> yep. top five pet peeves. With those. With those. Are the, how, did you actually? Oh, and it's a late crowd. That's another good one. <laughs> yeah, that's always a good <laughs> when one. When promoters try to put you on at one o'clock in the morning, and you're like, "There's going to be nobody here. It's a Thursday night. Everybody has to go to work or everything." Like, oh, it's a late crowd. I've heard that one a million times too. They've actually made you pay it, play at one o'clock in the morning. We fight it tooth and nail, but yeah, sometimes it's happened. It never ends well. Is it at a club or at? Oh, like at a club. <laughs> yeah. I mean, normal places. Like all ages shows and stuff have to be over by like 11 or something like that. But yeah. There's always some bar thrown in somewhere on the tour somewhere to where, you know, it's just like in the middle of Podunk somewhere and they're like, oh, it's a late crowd because they want to keep people in there drinking for as long as possible. Even if half of them have to leave and go to work or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So any of those bands that used to say we'll see at ozfest did you actually see any of them at ozfest no absolutely not one of them <laughs> never no that's fantastic a good a good sign of a of a, of a good band and one that's going to go somewhere they're usually humble they're usually like very respectful of everything and they're they usually you know don't have to make everybody else think that they're good if they're good they're good and people will take notice to it you know mm -hmm. a perfect example is the band shinedown they they used to open for us back in the day. They were really nice and respectful, and they just rose right up and conquered the throne and then took yeah. us out on tour after that. <laughs> you know? Those guys are amazing, you know, and they were just super, super nice guys. And, you know, it's always the ones with the attitude and they think that they're cooler than everybody else mm -hmm. that are overly compensating something for something. Yeah. Like a guy with a small penis that always thinks that he's the ladies' man. Oh, yeah. You know. What's up? <laughs> 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 Do you have any other pet peeves? Because these are really entertaining and I enjoy them. <laughs> I hate I hate it when people smack their lips when they're chewing. Yes! Stupid people really get on my nerves. Or too. slurp their milk when they're eating cereal. Yeah. I love it. Okay. And people that just think that they can just walk on here and hang out with us too. Does that happen a lot? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Come more on than in. you know, yeah, more than you ever know. People just knocking and looking in the curtain and trying to get in and trying to talk to everybody and wanting to hang out all day. That annoys the shit out of me too. Are they at least normally drunk when they try to do that? Or no, they no, they're just oh, no. goofballs. Looking for that free handout though. Free handout. Can I get into your show? No, can I get your booze is more like it. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. What is one piece of advice you would give other bands? Uh, I mean, the main thing is, is you just have to be willing to give everything you've got to it. Another, I guess another pet peeve is, is when, you know, there's a band and they're not willing to give up everything. They, you know, if you still want to have a, your day job, if you still want to, you know, hang around your girlfriend or you want to do this and you want to do that, you have to be willing to sacrifice everything. I can't tell you how much stuff we've given up over the years to make this happen. Losing girlfriends, losing wives, you know, uh, missing birthdays, funerals, you know. Christmas, Easter, I mean, you name it, we've probably missed and not been there for one of those things at any point in time, and you just have to give, you have to give your life to this if you really want to have a go at it, you know, or you have to be super, super rich, and it doesn't matter, because then you can just buy your way on everything, so, one of those two things, you have to be willing to, you have to find a group of hungry people that are just as hungry as you are like that, mm -hmm. I mean, we were really lucky, you know, 
that every we do find people like that that, that are in the band or else you know it wouldn't exist but yeah. you know again either that or you have to be completely super rich to where you can just buy your way on everything mm. I guess that doesn't matter at that point anyway. yeah <laughs> stay in school stay in school <laughs> don't do this is that what you're saying no, no? it's you gotta be smart about it like you were saying yeah you know? it's almost luck of the draw a lot of times too so yeah, yeah. yeah. alright um how do you decide on the bands that you're willing to sign to your label? Uh, it's uh, there's kind of two parts to the label. Mm-hmm. I mean the uh, the first section of the label is all established artists like Soil and Head P and Smile Empty Soul and Tantric and Emphatic and Black mm-hmm. Tide and all those bands. And those are bands that already have sales history and, and have proven themselves at one point or another. And we take them to carry on their career. And me being as the artist side, you know, I try to develop them each in band individually and give them you know what they need mm-hmm. to succeed rather than just plugging them in a, a system and just going down the pipeline and then what I wanted to do too as an artist is I wanted to develop new bands and give them a, a chance to you know experience all the cool things that I got to experience and you know mm-hmm. have a shot at their dream just like I got a shot with mine so that was taken a little bit differently and you know those bands I help them develop themselves along with them doing showing them how to do a lot of the work themselves as well Mm. so it's kind of like a leg up program I guess you would say and we've been really successful with everything there's a couple of bands like uh, Emperors and Elephants and Big Engine and even this band Romantic Rebel who's playing up the street (laughs) with Texas Hippie Coalition today one of my bands and uh, you know they've, they've went from pretty much local bands with like a couple hundred Facebook likes and you know just played the local little uh, bar to national touring acts that are actually mm-hmm. out there doing it and it, it makes me so proud as an A&R person to have been a part of that development mm-hmm. you know and and seeing them get to live their dream kind of the way I am I'm kind of like a proud father in that respect yeah on that sort of stuff so. I actually saw Romantic Rebel in February for the first time and they're really good live yeah they're fun they're and- like they're kind of like I, I like to think of them as like Hailstorm meets Van Halen. Yeah, you know they have that they have that throwback to them, which is really cool. But they still have the modern elements and everything about them as well. Yeah, um, have you ever seen a band while touring and been like, I could sign them, and then met them, and they were the cocky pet peeve that you had? Uh, I'm usually pretty good at sniffing that out by now. We've been doing it for so long, so yeah. my spidey sense kind of goes off when <laughs> when that sort of stuff happens. I mean, I can pretty much just pick up on it through an email nowadays, you know, yeah. just the way they carry themselves on an email or something. So, Yeah, very few get through my fingers, but there's an occasional one that you got to snap back into place. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's it for A Shot of Rock. I'm your host, Alex. This has been Soil, and we'll see you at the Rock Show. And on OzFest.